All right, so in this video, I'm going to show how to work with a more complex geometry like you'd use for capstone. So what I'm going to do is open up Fluent. I'm going to right-click Geometry, Import Geometry, Browse, and the one I want to work with is a file I download off GrabCAD Project 3 and then use the basic assembly. Uh, it's a solid work assembly image. So what I'm going to do is go straight into the mesh, right-click, go Edit Mesh. Take a little bit here for it to build up the the cat image. And since this one's more complex than that basic plane in the other video, it's gonna take a little more time. And now we're just uploading the image, but when it comes to meshing and stuff too. And it's done. So here it is. As you see, it's a lot more complicated than that basic plane that was all just like flat edges. There's actually like an actual wing and a body and propellers and stuff. So, so what I'm gonna do right now is just check real quick and see if this image is good enough to use like for post-processing and stuff and fluent to get like aerodynamic characteristics. So to do that, um, we're just gonna mesh, right click mesh, and generate mesh. And I can see it's going through all the faces and edges to get a good mesh. I, I didn't bother doing the computational box for this. I'm just trying to demonstrate uh, the tool to use on the aircraft itself because if this doesn't work alone, then it's not gonna matter. With that computational box, it's not gonna work either. All right, so you see here the mesh is generated on some of the, the wing and the body, but there's some error, a failed mesh with the propeller. So if we get onto the messages down here, we can actually see what went wrong. Um, so I expand this. So surface mesh is intersecting or close intersecting, being difficult to create a volume mesh. So what that's pretty much saying is, hey, this image isn't, I mean, this, this file is not watertight. And it says right here identifies propeller one, propeller two. So watertight means um, that there's no space at all for like electronic fluid to run through. So if you went through the fluent solver, you know, you can actually get a solution out of water going through the object. Um, so even though you think when you're making something in Rhino or SolidWorks that it might be watertight, if there's like duplicate lines or just like tiny gaps you don't see or something like that, it's, it's not, it doesn't know what to do computationally when you put into a solver like this. So we're gonna do the fix that as we're gonna actually work here in Fluent. So I'll go back here to the main page, uh, right click geometry and edit geometry and space claim. So space claim has some nice features built into it. Uh, pretty much all the AI is doing it, but you kind of have to step through it and think about each selection you're doing and if you want that to be changed. Um, and I'll explain more to each individual fix when I get to that, so let's open it up. You see it's taking a while again to build up the image because this is more complex. So Alright, there it is. So the thing I want to draw your attention to right away is this uh, over here on the side. Do you see here this whole assembly? Made in SOLIDWORKS is built off of nine different solids. So in SOLIDWORKS, when you built it, there'd be nine parts all put in the one assembly. So 
This makes it a lot more complicated for something like Fluent to then break down and mesh to do a solver. So one way we can make it easier on Fluent is we can combine the solids together into as few solids as possible. Hopefully one, but sometimes you can't. Maybe it's two or three. So what I'm going to do, instead of going, you can go one by one and combine them individually, or you can kind of go faster and just highlight the entire vehicle and hit combine there. And it's going to take a little time. All right, so you see it went down to solid and solid five. So this is all one solid now, and then this is the only remaining uh, other piece. So um, I can highlight that and try it again, but I already know it's not going to combine. But that's okay. We can move on. Uh, the next thing we're going to go to up here is repair. And the repair, the best way to do it is to work from left to right, and just go through each option and think about: Do you want that to happen? Um, but the first, before you understand whether or not you can do anything to it, you need to click on it and see the option and what it's doing. So the first one here is Stitch. And each time, it will tell you whether there's something or not something there. Um, so Stitchable Edges means like it's kind of mating the edges together. If they're not together in this drawing, there are no Stitchable Edges. So we go to the next thing, go to Gaps. Are there any gaps in the, the drawing? No gaps. Any missing faces? No. Um, keep going right and we go split edges. There's 16 split edges. So for this there's multiple things. There's three ways to go about doing this. Um, and it, there was a better way for certain drawings than others. So um, you have to be cognizant of like why you're choosing what you're doing. So the first way is they're already highlighted. So you can do is you can just click on an individual one and it'll fix the uh, split edge. Uh, other ways you can highlight a group of them and hit the check mark here. And it'll get rid of the group, or the easiest way, if I zoom back out and you look at all of them, in the very beginning of the drawing, we can just hit uh, the check mark and it'll do all of them. So, do that there. All right, next, uh, go to extra edges. There are no extra edges. Duplicates. So, there are duplicate faces here, as kind of was talking about. Now, when you're making something solid works, you might like put two pieces together, and it looks like it's together, um, but to the Electronic side, it actually looks like there's two faces with the minuscule gap that we would never see, but that's what the computer sees. So hit check, no more duplicate fi uh, faces. Um, so the curve gaps, no. Duplicate curves, no. Small curves, no. Small faces, there are two small faces. Um, so let's gonna check them, get rid of them. Small faces just make it harder to create a mesh around. Um, so here's simplify. And you'll see there's a lot of options here, a lot of splines. So for this uh, this geometry, doing simplify would be a very bad decision. It might do some of them, it'll never get rid of all of them. But simplify tries to take a bunch of splines and put them together, which could eventually change your geometry, um, which is what you don't want to do, because you want to have the most accurate way you can of whatever you're trying to measure. So I'm actually not going to do anything with the simplify. I'm going to go to inexact edges, and there's three. So I'm going to check, and what you're going to see here is actually it goes up to five now. So what the program does, the AI, is when you try to fix something, sometimes it creates another error that it defines later. Um, so what you can do, in this case, you can hit check again, and then no more inexact edges. It fixed itself. So moving on to the next one, you get straighten. Are there any faces that aren't straightened? No. So relax. Uh, what it does, it gets rid of control points, which could be good or bad, but something in a upstream curve like these props here, I don't know if I want to get rid of control points because those control points identify the curvature of the body. So if it was a, a rectangle and there was, you know, 10 spline faces found, or well, it wouldn't be in a rectangle, but something like that, then maybe I can get away with it. But when you have a complex curvature uh, like these props here, you do not want to get rid of the control points. So next thing is, the last thing is tangency. There's four almost tangent edge, uh, edges. And then got rid of three and one more. Hit check. And check again. And now there are no more tangent faces. 
So sometimes it takes a couple clicks, but you get the idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save here. Please send me save. Um, so I'm sitting here now. I'll go back to minimize this. Nope. Back here. Exit the mesh from before. I'm going to right click on mesh. I'm going to hit update upstream components. So all I'm doing is just updating uh, the geometry ahead of the mesh. So when it comes to meshing, we'll update the new one, not the old one. So right click edit mesh, and it's going to ask the same thing, just what I did, up update the upstream data. Here we go. Now it's going to pull back up the geometry here in the mesher. And now we're going to see if what I did to fix this actually works. I'm going to generate the mesh now. This is going to take a little bit of time, so be patient, please. So while this is uh, going on, I guess I'll just talk briefly on the whole capstone side. So a tool like this, Fluent, is going to be awesome. So if you could take your design, you make in, well, be in Rhino, you're not going to make your aircraft in SolidWorks, um, in Rhino, and able to put it into something like Fluent, um, you can get a lot more information than you would uh, using the wind tunnel on, like, mock-up. Um, I mean, you're going to get good data on the wind tunnel, but it takes a lot of time and preparation to be able to use the wind tunnel. Then you have all the correction factors, all that. So being able to import something here and like identify key areas that maybe you need to redesign real quick, or you make some new adjustment, you can just update the geometry and then redo the calculations. Like this is, this would be awesome. Um, that way you're more sure of an answer and a design point you choose. So uh, I definitely recommend having some guy on the team who will use this and every iteration of a design process, you can read, put it in there. Sure, it takes you know a few minutes to generate a mesh and then get a solution and stuff, but the amount of time you save and the more confident you are in your answer is tremendous. So it's definitely a useful tool. And the problem I went through on this video is probably one of the biggest issues you're gonna run into um, when it does come to importing your design in from Rhino. Um, into Fluent, like the water tightness, because like you said, like when you're running through um, your CAD uh, drawing, it looks like it's all good to you, and Rhino's going to save it and say it's fine, but when you put it into Fluent, there's going to be some issues, so. As you can see, the meshing process shows that little green image um, highlighting um, just to demonstrate how it's going through each individual face, each edge, everything to make sure it doesn't miss anything in creating the mesh around the body. And here we go. And as you see in the window here, there's no more 
failed mesh, obsolete mesh, everything is now fully meshed together. Um, this is what we're looking for, right? So um, now this is considered watertight and it has a good mesh around it. As I look down here, um, there are no messages, so no error messages to validate what I just said here with the failed mesh, obsolete mesh. We go to the props now and you can see they have a successful mesh around them. Um, so all in all, it's successful repair of the image, uh, the geometry, and we were able to create a success successful match. So that's all I got for this one. Thanks, guys.